Hello and welcome to the United Stands. This is your Manchester United Transfer News Daily where we talk about all the latest Manchester United Transfer News and give it that real fan opinion. Loads and loads to talk about. We're going to start off with the Milinkovic Savic. If anybody watched the live stream last night, apologies for that. God knows what's gone wrong with it, but it got uh, we had it's no longer there. So we're going to cover it very very quickly now. Um basically, uh I said this name so many times last night. Luciano Maggi, who is an ex Juventus director, has said that Milinkovic Savage will be signing for Juventus next month. Um, so effectively, that would mean Man he's not going to sign for Manchester United. What are your thoughts on that? Give us your comments below. I mean, what I would say, and I said this last night as well, is that in Italy, it's a sort of a weird, uh, weird environment or, or a positive environment if you're a Serie A fan, because a lot of players like it there and a lot of players move within there. Pjanic went from Roma to Juventus. This happens a lot. Clubs Maybe it doesn't happen in. It's in fact, it is. It is. It is to us. It's a bit of a weird demo, the weird environment because you get a lot in Italy. They still retained that thing, that sort of insular thing where players move between clubs within Serie A. Um, obviously, in Germany, it happens because everyone goes to Bayern Munich. That's the progression. But in England, you don't really get it where teams go between clubs, especially in the top sort of half. So. It is quite uh, unique in Juvent in Italy, and Juventus are the are the head of that tree. So Milinkovic Savic would look on Juventus as a progression, as a as a desirable move. Um, I mean, obviously Milinkovic Savic for me was the was the symbolic signing United need to make, and a lot of you felt that as well that that was the signing going into the summer we needed to make. I suppose when you look at the fee, hundred million pounds, um, we've got Pogba, Matic, and Fred. Can you justify that fee and where does he play? I personally think you bring him in and those one of those three who's not performing goes on the bench or Milinkovic Savic goes on the bench. We do need competition in there. He is a symbol signing and it's the sort of signing, it's the sort of, in a sentence, I didn't say this last night, so this is bonus. In a sentence, it's basically how you close the gap on Man City. You don't close the gap on Man City by signing Delot and Fred, who are good players. You've got to go on, go out and buy one or two players that are real. Drop your jaw. They are big signings, and that's the sort of signing. If we want to close the 20-point gap, you've got to go and spend the money and get a player like that. So how accurate is the information? Well, it comes from somebody who was a director at Juventus, and um, how accurate is he? Don't know. I haven't... I haven't met the bloke and a lot of people haven't, but he has said it. I mean, it could be as reliable as ex Real Madrid president saying that certain things are going to happen and they don't. It could just be somebody trying to stay relevant about the club that they used to work for. Or they could have had some insider information. The reality is, what do we do if we don't sign Milinkovic Savic? Because I still think we need to sign a midfielder as well. Verratti has been mentioned. I mentioned Vidal. I think Vidal, all right, he is on the decline. I accept that. But he would give us something different for a couple of years. Um, what are the alternatives to Milinkovic Savic? Do we need another midfielder? Yes, is what I would say, because the midfield is the problem area. And if we're not buying another uh, another midfielder, that means we're going to keep Fellaini. And we can't win a title with that. Um, the next thing I want to discuss is Golovin. Uh, played fantastically well for Russia yesterday. I mean, they were only playing Saudi Arabia. And with all due respect to Saudi Arabia, they weren't very good. And obviously, they will be going home once they've completed their games. Oh, not to the mic. Uh, once they've completed their games against uh, Egypt and Uruguay. Which reminds me, we, we did our first watch along on That's Football yesterday. Loads of people watching. Lots of great banter and topics from your favourite biscuit to admiring the brilliance of Golovin. And it was a very good goal that he scored. Uh, and he got two assists as well. Well, so he does bring a lot to the table but this is where there's a bit of an interesting uh, angle to it because Juventus are meant to more or less have that deal done Arsenal are very interested in him United were linked to him but we were linked to him probably about two weeks ago when it was like you can get him for 20 million he reminds me of a of a young matter and um yeah, you know, there's nothing wrong with being a young Matter. Young Matt uh, Wan Matter was a very, very good player and still is a very good player. Um, I don't think United are in for Golovin. Uh, I don't think. He, I also, the reason I put him in here as well is if United went in for him, he looks like a good player. But this is what I've said before: you've got to be very careful about the World Cup because people who perform well in a World Cup, it's 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 almost it's almost like a, a bit of a mirage because. Just because you play well in the World Cup, the standard of international football is way, way down compared to the standard of club football for many reasons. So just because somebody does well in the World Cup, you've got to be very careful that you don't react to that and say, oh, there's 40 million for Golovin. Because in the Premier League, it could just be a run-of-the-mill player. I mean, look at the England squad. You've got players who, who are probably going to perform really well in this World Cup. 
who were bang average. You know, Jordan Henderson, people like that. So you've, you've got to be careful about where the... St- the, the I mean, the, there, were, there are very good players in the World Cup, but it's very hard to gauge sometimes in, in relation to the oppositions that they're playing. But uh, he does look like a decent player. De Gea, I want to talk about De Gea in a very, very positive way because obviously the, the Real, new Real Madrid manager, ex-Spain coach, don't go down that route, um, he is... Um, obviously uh, knows De Gea and people are thinking, well, is he going to go there? And De Gea's comments were that I like United, but, you know, never say never. It looks like Real Madrid are going to sign Alisson from Roma, which is a goalkeeper. He's the Brazilian national goalkeeper. And obviously, if he signs for Real Madrid, that would shut the door big time on a deal for De Gea. And De Gea will stay at at Manchester United, which is absolutely fantastic. What intrigues me a little bit is that I thought Thibaut Courtois Courtois was leaving Chelsea. And uh, where's he going to go? So, you know, I don't know. It's not not our problem, but uh, De Gea is our problem. And he's a very nice problem to have. And it looks like he will be staying at Manchester United, which is fantastic. And another one that might please somebody, doesn't necessarily please me. Chris Smalling's been linked with a move to West uh, West Ham. Now, Arsenal have been interested in Smalling in the past. That was in the Wenger days. And uh, this is where I find it interesting about what Manchester United's future is. I mean, Andrew Ellis, who's who's a bit of a legend in the comments, he's always uh, been very anti-Mourinho and uh, he's very well known in the live comments. He came on the Skype show last night. Do give it a a listen if you missed it. It was a very, very good call. And... um, he, he did mention that, that, that one of the issues with Mourinho is, is we don't know what his best 11 is. He just chops and changes the team all the time. And it would be very weird, I think, if we were to sell Chris Smalling, who has been such a fundamental part to Mourinho's first team plans last season, to then sell him. It sort of shows you this haphazard approach in I don't know whether there is I'm, I'm sure there isn't a haphazard approach at Manchester United and Mourinho does have a plan in mind. But it comes across as haphazard to the fans because players that he seems to like would we would we sell players that he's begging to stay want to go uh, players we want to stay are saying they want to go it's it's all a bit what is the plan what is the plan rumors of Lindelof going on loan and another young center back coming in rumors of Bay not getting on with the manager i mean what 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 is going on what is our you know smalling seems to be somebody okay he's a bit limited but he is a player that Mourinho seems to trust and then there's talk of him going um i don't i think this summer is just such so in the air we don't know what's going to happen do we but going round in circle back to milinkovic savic if he goes to juventus i wouldn't be surprised uh, i think juventus real madrid manchester united are probably going to be one of the three clubs he goes to and i, I just be you <laughs> We don't know what's going on behind closed doors with Manchester United. For all we know, they might be waiting to sign Milinkovic, San- Milinkovic, Savic, Sandro and Ronaldo all on the same day in July. And it's been set in stone for a long time. We don't know that. But we can be sort of led by mood. And my mood at the moment is I just don't think that we are in for Milinkovic, Savic. Which is a shame because I think if you want to close a gap on Manchester City, that is the sort of signing that you have to go and make. And you know, I think Fred is a very good signing. But there is an element of adaption he's got to get used to the league is he going to hit the ground running and I just think United needs some star status United need at least two players to come into that team and 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 let's not forget where what happened last season we tanked in the Champions League we got beaten by an out of form Chelsea in the FA Cup final and we were an embarrassing gap behind Manchester City albeit we were in second place so we're not. We've not actually got a lot of momentum or stability to build on anyway, and that is why we need to bring in some real talent this summer. And I hope that we're going to do it. But who, who, should we go for if we're not getting Milinkovic Savic? I mean, Verratti will be mentioned, but as I said the other night, Verratti is the same size as Fred, and they're very similar players. So you'd you'd think we might be going for something a little bit different. I just hope we're not going for an Artovic. <laughs> anyway, thanks everybody for watching. Drop your comments below. Please do drop a like on the video and get involved. Thanks for watching.